Hi all, our instructive game today is the F5 Breakthrough. Playing white was Michael Adams and playing black was Veselin Topolov. The year was 2006, it was the Chorus Weekend Z Tournament. Adams played E4 and Topolov steered towards what is known as the Shaven Ingen variation of Sicilian. So we have some fairly standard opening moves here and this is like the classical line. So white is uh, preventing black's counterplay with B5 by playing A4 here. And this is all sort of normal stuff. So bishop f3, bishop f8, black might be preparing later g6 and bishop g7. After queen d2, we see there an interesting seemingly waste of time with knight a5, but it does provoke Adams to play now b3. So he's kind of weakened that c3 square and the c line generally, if black ever sort of increased the pressure later on the c line. After rook b8, rook ad1 was played, and Adams is already targeting now the d6 pawn. So that is um, a theoretical target, but in practice it's kind of hard usually to get access to that d6 pawn. Here though, Adams demonstrated a nice effective plan. He played bishop f2 now, so he's got the idea of bishop g3, and then later f5. So d6 really will be uh, a, an actual realistic target in this position. After knight d7, bishop g3. So now with the idea potentially of f5 to target um, the d6 pawn, Topolov now played knight takes d4, and after queen takes, he tried to gain some queenside counterplay by playing b5. Adams now played again controversially on the queen side. He took on b5, and now he played b4. Now normally this would be um, leaving a gaping hole on the c c4 square. You know, potentially black has knight b6 to c4, but it's not possible here because of knight takes b5. But uh, Topolov maybe um, was thinking this is unusual. He plays now g6. So if he can comfortably get his bishop to, to that diagonal, this c3 knight is also a target because it, it's got no protecting pawns. So is Adams worried by this? No, in this position, he starts what is really a spectacular combination. It involves a breakthrough on the f file with f5. But f5 immediately here, let's have a look, could it could just be answered by bishop g7. And after bishop takes d6, black would be fine. Just just queen takes c3 here is is on. And black would be material up in these variations. So actually f5 is not the right way to play it. Adams plays it brilliantly. He plays first e5. And he encourages black to seemingly be safe as houses now with d5. However, do you remember one of our previous videos about drawing the king out and it was via the kind of f7 or f2 weakness? Here Adams is kind of exploiting this f7 pawn to be able to draw the black king out later. But this is kind of a lead up to that. He first plays now f5. So it's a very interesting pawn sacrifice it seems, but it really does work. Black now can't take with the e, take, e pawn because of um, e6 and that's a horrible skewer on the queen and rook. So let's have a look. E takes e6 and white's just completely winning here because of the skewer. So black is forced to take g takes f5 and now Adams plays quite a brilliant peace sacrifice. He plays knight takes d5, not giving black any time. The knight is now attacking the queen. And if e takes then e6 is again very very strong for white because of the skewer and attack on the knight here. So here, Topolov is forced to play something like queen c4, which is what, what he played. And Adams leaves that peace sacrifice. He just plays the calm queen d2 now. And he's threatening all sorts of things like queen g5 check. So Topolov, actually, he can't take that knight. If he did, let's have a quick look. e takes d5, queen g5 check, bishop g7. And now... Bishop takes d5 is crushing because we get this mechanism for drawing the black king out after say queen takes c2, bishop takes f7, king takes, queen h5 and there's a vicious skewer on this diagonal and if king f8, black will be forced to give up the queen now after rook takes f5 so this will be winning for white. So that shows that um, in this position after queen d2 black can't really take this knight uh, on d5 so Topolov just defends that g5 square. He plays h6, hoping the knight will go away or something. Or maybe Adams will play knight f6. Knight f6, though, according to Ribka, is strong here. Adams, though, 
had another idea. He wanted to stop black from playing queen g4 in some variations. So he played h3. And now, after e takes d5, bishop takes d5. So black can't play queen g4. He plays now queen takes b4. And Adams now continues with c3 first to evict that queen away. And now, after queen c5, he brings in further resources on this f file. He plays rook takes f5. And after rook e6, I'll give you five seconds now to see if you can see Adams' next move, starting from now. Adams played rook takes f7, so he's really drawing Topolov's king out. Because if king takes, let's have a look at king takes, queen f4 check, and this rook is dropping off after, say, king g7, bishop takes e6, and white's just winning this. So here, Topolov played knight b6, and now Adams simply continued with rook d f1, not worrying about his, his bishop, because he's now attacking this f8 bishop. And after knight takes, rook takes, he's picking up Topolov's queen. And this position now is very, very difficult for Topolov, who has the two rooks. Because um, white has more pawns on the king side for a start. And these pieces are difficult to coordinate here. After king e8, Adams plays bishop h4, already threatening menacing things like queen d8 check. So bishop d7, and now we see bishop f6. So that's nicely protecting the e5 pawn, and also liberating now these pawns can, can start going forward. So after b4, Adams plays queen e4, not only attacking that b pawn now, but threatening queen g6, which is quite menacing. So bishop c8 was played, and after takes, it's all over really. Adams has got an easily winning position now. So he just takes that h pawn, and then he starts moving his own h pawn. And really, black can do nothing about this. These two pawns are decisive. So h5, and now Topolov resigned. So that was quite a spectacular f5 um, idea from Adams. Let's have a look in overview and summary. So it seemingly was a standard Scheveningen variation of the Sicilian. And Adams playing very classically. So just playing normal kind of moves, king h1. But after bishop f3, things started to get very interesting after this queen d2. Topolov seemed to waste a bit of time with knight a5 because Adams just played b3 here. But then this diagonal was, and this square was kind of weakened. So that was Topolov's aim, to kind of expose this weakness on the diagonal. So Topolov first played rook b8, but Adams then started building up pressure on the d6 pawn with this bishop f2 to g3 maneuver. And we see now the combating of, of plans. After b5, Adams simply took and played another controversial move, just b4, to hold off black's counterplay on the queen side. And then we see the g6 move. But it did weaken Black's king a bit. And here Adams really pounced after e5 by playing this f5. So it was the start of a brilliant peace sacrifice on d5, which really aimed in effect to get the black king out via the f7 square. So this knight takes d5 was a really great breakthrough sacrifice after queen c4, this very calm queen d2 move with quite menacing threats now of queen g5 check. After h6, h3, so Topolov finally took the sacrifice, but then his king was drawn out after rook takes f5, rook e6, the spectacular rook takes f7. So this brilliant rook sacrifice following on from an earlier knight sacrifice, and black's king is starting to be more and more defenceless now. So Topolov in this position, he, he felt he had to take on d5, but um, there's nothing really better, say bishop g7, then just queen f4 here, according to Ribka, is really strong. So white's threatening things like rook takes g7. Let's have a look, knight takes d5. In fact, instead of rook takes g7, here, queen g4 is apparently a mate in 6. So it shows that black's really defenceless after this um, f file breakthrough. So in the game, Topolov just gave up his queen here. And this kind of was a hopeless position now, because Adams first clamped down his bishop on f6, protecting that e5 pawn. And after queen e4, you know, his pawn was immune here, because after b takes c3, for example, it's a mate in 3, queen g6, king f8, queen g7, and now queen g8 mate. So Topolov was losing his pawn after this b4, queen e4. And with that, really, there's no, it's completely hopeless now. So... Topolov resigned here. 
I hope you enjoyed that game, and please leave any comments on YouTube. Thanks very much.